Hi guys, and welcome back to the JLX Friends with Benefits podcast with me, your host, Xander Conover. Today I'm going to be handing over the mic to Jack, and Jack recorded this podcast for us a few weeks ago, as you'll tell, but it only takes a few scrolls through social media to see that the points that are made are still very much valid. Enjoy the show. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to the podcast. Today's going to be a solo show with me, Jack, because I've been inspired, should we say, by some things that I've been seeing on social media the last week or so, but especially in the last couple of days, and then through some conversations that I've had in check-ins with clients as well, to share some advice with you guys, some things that have been helping me and helping my clients through this, and some of the mindset shifts that I've been giving them that I really think are a bit different. They're not the typical sorts of trite advice that everyone and their dogs has been posting on social media at the moment and putting in Instagram captions and a lot of the stuff that is already becoming cliche and for me at least, maybe I'm just a sensitive soul, but difficult to read at this point because it's been repeated so damn much. So The stuff that I've been thinking through and inspired by is first linked to people talking about missing the gym, people talking about I miss training, putting up throwback Thursday pictures of them hip thrusting, putting up things in their stories about I wish I could be back there, and then also a huge amount of complaints about at-home workouts at the moment and how people aren't enjoying them so much, they're sick of doing them, they want to have their, you know, shiny gym equipment back, etc, etc. And as I said, I've seen this really step up in the last couple of days, especially we're getting to the end of week three here of lockdown in the UK. And I think it's just getting to a point where it's also starting to look like this is probably going to go on for quite a bit longer than we first initially thought. And so those feelings are really starting to creep in for people. And of course, now with the social media driven world that we live in, a lot of people's first thoughts then get put straight out onto the internet and um, put there forever in terms of Instagram captions and things that people want to go and express to the world. But I've been in the fortunate position to have taken a step back from that and not been posting this week. I've been thinking instead, working a lot behind the scenes and speaking with clients and really trying to observe and understand a lot of this. And the first piece of advice stems from this because it was triggered by a conversation that I had with a client of mine on Tuesday in one of our check-ins. And she shared with me in a very honest, noble and normal way, I would say, that she doesn't love at-home workouts, right? They're not her bag. And Again, she was very honest about this. She was very matter of fact. And actually, she was even positive and um, acknowledged her gratitude for still being able to work out regardless, still being able to do something. But she said, do you know what? I just, I don't love this type of training. I'd rather be in the gym. I'd rather be doing the exercises I used to do. And at-home workouts have never really been my bag. That's why I didn't really do them. And... The mindset shift that I brought to her and that I think will help a lot of you guys as well is thinking back to a time where we weren't in lockdown when we didn't have coronavirus and the whole situation around it and say you were out on a date with me or say we were uh, co-workers and we were speaking at work or I was a friend of yours and we were having a conversation or I was a family member, often when we're having these conversations and we are that quote unquote fitness person in our circle or it's part of our identity, what will get asked is, why do you go to the gym? Why do you work out? Why do you lift? Why do you bother? How do you have the energy, right? And every variation of that question that I'm sure you can remember getting asked regularly. And in that moment, when someone would have asked you that question, I want you to put yourself in that position, as I said earlier, as if you are on a date with me, a co-worker with me, a friend with me, whatever it is, and I'm putting that question to you. Pause for just a second and think what your response 
would be. Would you say, well, the reason that I go to the gym, Jack, is because of the leg press. The reason that I go to the gym is because I have up to 200 kilos I can load on a barbell. The reason I go to the gym is because of this one treadmill that's in the corner that's my favourite. The things that you would have said would not have included any specific pieces of equipment, any specific exercises, nothing that is exclusive to the gym. What it is instead that I would wager anyone would say in that kind of circumstance when they're getting grilled on that type of thing is I love how the gym makes me feel. I love that when I go to the gym, I feel empowered. I love that I can challenge myself to lift heavier weights week on week. I love that I get to progress and see that progression manifest. I love that post-workout I get an endorphin rush of this different concoction of chemicals that just light my brain up and make me feel fantastic. That's the stuff that you'd be saying, right? And there is every chance that you can get every single one of those things still from working out at home. It's just that we need to be able to focus on those things and really put our attention towards what we're getting from it rather than the modality of how it is that we're getting there. Whether you get there with a leg press or a resistance band, whether you get there by loading up a heavy rucksack or using a heavy barbell, it really doesn't matter when you boil it down to the essence and what you really think about what you're trying to get from this. You can still progress brilliantly at home. You can still get that feeling of improving week on week. You can still get that endorphin rush post-workout. You can still have all of those good feels come your way from working out at home. It doesn't require specific gym equipment, but what we tend to focus on is what we don't have and what has been stripped away from us, or at least what we feel has been taken from us in this circumstance. It's really easy to point the finger and give blame to the fact that we're not in the gym anymore and say, that's what's been taken away from me and I want it back as if it's some sort of birthright. But you don't have that right now. That is not an option at this moment. Full stop, right? That is as useful as saying, I want to be a cat right now. I feel like I should be in Barbados. You're not. You don't have a gym to have access to right now. It's not an option. And so wasting mental energy, feeling like you should be pursuing that, like you should be lusting after it, is genuinely pointless. And it is not serving you. It's not helping you. And it's not going to help you better your at-home workouts. Because if you're always focusing on the fact that these are the shitty things that I don't want to be doing, right, these are the second-rate option, then you're never actually going to be able to dive into them headfirst wholeheartedly and really give them your all because you're always thinking that again they're a second option they're a background thing that you don't want to be there when actually the case is is that at home workouts are all we have right now and the way that you're going to be able to enjoy them and get the most progress out of them is by diving in is by going for it and embracing it for what it is yes it feels different to using a heavy barbell Yes, you're not going to be able to use that favourite hack squat machine that you like, but you can still get all of those positive things that I previously mentioned from at-home workouts. And this now does lead into something that is quite trite and something that is certainly um, overly spoken about and overly generalised on social media a lot, which is gratitude. And just stick with me for a second here because I know you're going to be throwing up even just hearing that word and some fitness social media person talking about it but please hear me out in this sense because we have a very natural and a very normal tendency due to the fact that we have evolved from the savannas and come up in the way that humans have to have this loss aversion and have a fight or flight mechanism and to focus on things that previously we liked and now we don't have any more and to uh, create stress and anxiety around those things. But what if you actually 
released some of that tension? What if you actually stopped focusing on those things that we have lost and actually started to focus in on the things that we can be grateful for? In this case, the fact that you can still work out at home, the fact that you still have the bodily functions that allow you to lift, the fact that you can still make the most of what you've got, the fact that you have objects and items in your life that you can club together to make weights from, like you're not homeless on the street and you're not able to have any possessions that you could even make weights from. You're in a situation where you have four walls around you and a warm room to actually exercise in. Like, What if you flipped your mindset from thinking about the things that literally cannot happen right now, like being in a gym, and instead you came around to the fact that there is a whole lot to be grateful for. And as I said earlier, this is actually born out of a practical thing because we quite literally do not have access to those things that we're pining after at the moment. It is a complete waste of your mental energy, your time and your resources to be pining after something that literally does not exist. Right? We do not currently exist in a universe where we can go and do that thing. And so instead of focusing on that stuff that we can't have, let's hone in on the stuff that we do have. Let's show gratitude for that, not only in a very obvious abject way of acknowledging the fact that we are grateful for it, but also by really diving into it first, really going full force into these at-home workouts and showing our gratitude with action by making the most of them and absolutely doing the most that we can to make them as enjoyable as possible. Because chances are, if you're someone like me who is into fitness, who is into improving themselves, who is into getting better, the things that I enjoy most are the things that I get good at. They're the things that I feel that I'm feeling progress in and I'm improving in. And if I just cast at-home workouts to the back of my mind and I see them as a chore and something that I'm not enjoying, I'm never going to get to that stage with it. So let's dive in, give it our all, and really make sure that we are making the most of every single session. Now, this next one that came up for me is actually something that I'm still wrestling with, I'm still thinking about, and I guess I'm using this to think it out in front of you guys in real time. But I did have some insight and another story type teaching that I can tie into this one and bring around to it that I just had in a thought this morning. And that was around the people on social media who are currently pacifying you and telling you that it's okay. You should be scared. You should be anxious. Don't worry that you're not getting out of your pyjamas till 3pm. Don't worry that you're not working out. Don't tell yourself off for eating like shit, right? And all of these different things, which is, I would say, masked under this kind of blanket of quote-unquote self-love, and in my opinion, isn't actually self-love at all. Because loving yourself also sometimes means having the love to care enough about yourself to pull yourself up by the scruff of your neck and say, I deserve better. To be able to say, I need to do better. And again, having that love for yourself to acknowledge that you deserve more than what you're currently experiencing. And if you are sitting around in your pants right now, eating crisps and doing no exercise and wanking four times a day, you're probably not being your highest self. I'm just going to put that out there as a guess. And again, a lot of people on Instagram are saying that that's fine and that you should be forgiving to yourself and you should be fine with that. Don't get me wrong, there's an element of acceptance. You do have to accept where you're at at this time and you have to acknowledge that. And sometimes that also does involve a bit of grieving. It involves sometimes some shame and some vulnerability. But when that crying is over you better get to what you can do next. You better get to progressing and you better get to feeling better about your situation through action, not through acceptance and just settling into that state. And this is a controversial thing to say. I know I might catch some flack for this because I also understand that there are a lot of people going through very turbulent times at the moment. 
but these aren't the kind of people that I'm referencing. You know, if you have people near and dear to you dying, if you have people very ill, if you yourself have gotten extremely ill, if you are in real, like, disarray right now, you're not the person I'm talking to. I'm sending love to you. I really do feel your situation and I empathise with it, but this isn't a message for you, right? This is for the people that I see on Instagram who are say they've gone back to be living in their parents house they're either still working online or they've been furloughed from their jobs they still have income none of their immediate family are ill or dying nor their friends and yet they're still telling you that you should basically lay down and play dead and accept the fact that this is an anxiety ridden time and i just can't agree with that i can't get on board with that and the thing that i've noticed most recently with these people is that a lot of the positive messaging that gets put out there, they immediately respond to and turn it on its head. You know, if they, I saw a meme that was going around, which was around the kind of topic of self-development whilst you're in quarantine. And what it said was that if you don't come out of quarantine with a new skill, a new qualification, having started that side hustle or whatever it is, it's not that you used to lack time, it's that you lack discipline and again you've got different schools of people that this is going to be correct and incorrect for every situation is infinitely complex and nuanced i'm not saying that this applies to everyone but on the whole that's a pretty good sentiment right if you've taken away that excuse and that barrier of people previously saying that they don't have enough time and then they're still not doing that thing you realize that actually deep down time isn't the problem and there was an immediate knee-jerk response on things like this from that quote-unquote self-love blanket of people crossing out the things like you didn't lack discipline and saying things like be kind to yourself we're in a global pandemic or you know just basically completely slating what that message is and saying that it can't be true and that you shouldn't be getting better right now and you should be kind to yourself and that immediate knee-jerk reaction really intrigued me and I genuinely mean intrigued I'm not saying that in a passive aggressive way or like I'm trying to belittle them it really did interest me because I thought what makes someone have that immediate response to where people are trying to get better people are trying to improve and people are trying to highlight areas where you might be blind to the fact that actually time isn't your excuse and it's something else and they're trying to help you improve as well and you have that immediate response to shoot them down, to tell them not to strive for it, to quote unquote again, be kind to yourself and ultimately because of that, not achieve. I thought, what is it that makes people do that? And it tied back into something that I have, again, spoken through with clients previously. I've spoken about with friends who are going through tough times and something that I often remind myself of as well and that is something that I'm going to call the yellow sweatshirt hypothesis that makes it sound all scientific doesn't it the yellow sweatshirt hypothesis and that is again this is where the little bit of a, a story teaching should we say comes into it let's say that you are walking down the street and someone comes up to you and they say mate that yellow sweatshirt that you're wearing is absolutely disgusting I think you look ridiculous and you take a step back and you're surprised of course by this random person approaching you on the street and telling you this and then you look down and you're wearing a blue sweatshirt right then you would walk on that other person runs off and in your head you would just think well that guy was crazy I don't know what that was about, I don't get it, it's probably a funny story that you'd end up telling a friend or your partner when you get home, you'd laugh about it and you wouldn't think much about it, you wouldn't invest anything in it. However, if you went round to a friend's house wearing a yellow sweatshirt and that friend said, that yellow sweatshirt you're wearing is disgusting, I think you look terrible, what the hell are you doing, did you really come out of your house dressed like that this morning you're probably going to be hurt you're probably going to feel that and what's the difference between those two things it's that one of them 
you actually identified with. When you were wearing the yellow sweatshirt, you identified with that and you internalized it because there was a part of you that believed it could be true. When that crazy guy on the street came up to you and you were wearing a blue sweatshirt and he said that yellow sweatshirt looks ridiculous, you don't even question it. You don't even identify with it for a second. There is no part of you that believes it to be true because you're objectively looking down and seeing a blue sweatshirt. So you brush it off as if that was some crazy guy and it doesn't matter. And what this ties into is when people have that sort of reaction, when someone has a knee-jerk negative reaction, where I go with it and what now I think about it is what part of that are they identifying with? Where do they see that thing in themselves? Where are they getting triggered? Where are they being offended? What is it that is causing them to have that reaction? And in this case, bringing it back round to what I was talking about with the Instagram narrative of some people using this time to get better and other people saying that you shouldn't be right now, it makes me think that those people that are immediately shooting down other people's targets, that are immediately shooting down people that are being ambitious in this time, actually there might be some part of them that is identifying with that fact that they should be getting better. And ask yourself this, do you find yourself being a little bit riled up when you see someone posting about the fact that they've actually improved during this time? Maybe their business has gotten better, maybe their lifts have improved. Where are those little things that you are sparking some actual jealousy about and that is causing a negative internal reaction to come up for you? Where are you identifying with that yellow sweatshirt when actually you're sat there with a blue sweatshirt on? Really have a think about those areas as to where you are over identifying with other people's circumstances and comparing yourself up against them instead of just being in your own lane. And I do genuinely believe that that is a lot of what that movement is. It's people actually in turn pacifying themselves by saying these things and making themselves feel better about the fact that they maybe aren't lifting as much as they should be right now. They aren't tracking their food or they aren't eating as healthily as they should be right now or they aren't actually taking care of themselves perhaps as well as they should be. And deep down they know that, but the way that that manifests is actually as an attack on the people who are doing those things. Now, once again, of course, this isn't going to be the case for every single one of these people. Everyone's situation is extremely complex, nuanced, and I get that. But I'm sharing general thoughts and general feelings and things that I hope will resonate with you guys, because I believe that you guys that listen to this are similar to me. And even though you can take a step back and acknowledge, yeah, these are difficult times in some ways you know they are uh, times that can induce anxiety and worry over certain things you're also the sort of person that actually does want to get better and if we objectively look at the facts it's probably better to be doing well right now than it is to be feeling like shit like that just seems like such an obvious blanket statement that is almost ridiculous to say but you literally have people online and on instagram at the moment telling you that it's okay to not be okay and it's fine that you're not being productive and that you're drinking way too much alcohol and you're not working out and you're not being healthy. I mean, yeah, it's it's okay in a sense of that you're existing, you're still alive, you're not a bad person because of it. But you know what? I think life could be a whole lot better for you if you just make some of those key changes. And that doesn't mean that you have to make those changes by tomorrow, nor the next day, nor next week. But what it does mean is that you start to incrementally improve and that you pull yourself out of whatever hole you might be in, step by step, brick by brick. It doesn't matter where you're starting. It doesn't matter where you're trying to finish. What matters is that you do improve day by day and you do what you can to actively work towards getting better, right? You focus on the process and you focus on what you know you can and should be doing to be improving. That's the stuff that's going to give you self-confidence and that's the stuff that's going to also keep up your hope for the future, which is so important in a time like this to be able to acknowledge where you're at now 
and keep that vision going into the future, you can and you will get better, no matter how slow and how incremental the process might be. Keep that faith going forwards, you can get there. That's gonna be it from me today, guys, but if this resonated with you, if you feel this helped you, or if you feel like you know someone that this might help or this might resonate with, please do share this however you can, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, DMs, all that good stuff. Share it around and also let me know what you thought of it. And especially if you've got you know opposing ideas and different opinions on this type of stuff, I'm always open to having an open dialogue about it and understanding where other people are at and where other people are coming from. When I don't understand something or when I see something that confuses me, I want to learn more about it. I want to be intrigued by it and just get open and interested in it. So don't think that it's ever going to be received as like conflict to me or anything negative. I love hearing different perspectives and different opinions from different people who have different lenses on things that perhaps I just haven't even considered. So please do feedback to me, as I say, let me know what you thought and I'll catch you guys in the next one. We're going to be adding in a Q&A to the podcast in a few weeks time. And to do that, we're going to need some questions from you guys. So do go over to our team Instagram page at JLX Coaching on Instagram, of course, and click the link in the bio and it will take you to a quick Google form where you can fill in uh, any of the questions you've got and we will get to those in the podcast to come. As for coaching, you can also check the link in our Instagram bio for that or go to the website, which is at the moment jacklenton.com and you will see the links to coaching there. Have a good day.